So now I am here, uh, not with Alex Cuff, because we're about half an hour away from each other. <laughs> Hang on, bring that arm back up. There we go. Hey, how you doing, buddy? This, we're, this looks completely <laughs> wrong on my end. We're touching hands, I swear. So yeah, I'm not with you, unfortunately, because of these lockdown rules, and we don't want to catch the virus, so we're doing this from home, which was something uh, I was considering, but you know, wasn't sure I wanted the channel to do that. But then you said, you know, interview me, and we'll test it, and honestly, it should be good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for these these videos to never go up and be like, oh, I <laughs> guess I was bad at this. No, I I tested. Um, I looked. I watched a, a quick recording of the last episode we just did, and no, it looks good. And I was more referring to the actual content of my answers than <laughs> the video. <laughs> So you no. didn't comment on that. Oh no, no, you were great. You were great. Well, I'll definitely upload. You were, you were, but I, I, was good. I, <laughs> but, I always knew you'd you'd be good at the actual receiving the interview part. So yeah, you and I have known each other six, no, seven years now. Ooh, 2014. Seven, we 2014. Yes. Yeah, we met at a. Oh, um, like, that's actually eight, but no. It's <laughs> seven. Yeah, uh, we met at an uh, open improv workshop at. Uh, Michelle Rakos's house, who will be later join the improv team, the Improverts. The second time I met you was at Playmate, so improv was really all we knew each other for yeah. for a while until yeah, I joined the cast of Red vs Blue. I remember actually there was a moment before as I think I think you spoke to me after work shows 2015. Yes, that's true, yeah, and bumped into you at uni a couple of times too. Yeah, I mean, it's insane to me that I remember specifically how, like, how you, like, at, at, after that show, it, there was a moment where it was like, y you remember me, man, from improv? And it's insane that, like, like the, the two of us have at any point been like, you remember me, man? Because, like, we've been friends <laughs> for that long. <laughs> yeah. There's really never been a moment where it's been like, oh, yeah, that Horvat guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's so crazy. But you do remember me, yeah, from improv? Uh, not from improv, but from everything else. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All the acting. So, uh, what have we actually been in together? So, Red vs. Blue, obviously yeah. the two improvert shows. It's, um, it's just on stage, just alongside each other, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Cannibal. Yeah, we did Cannibal. Um, a few Playmates that we did as well. Did we do any short... Yeah, Playmates, that's true. But did we do any short plays together? I don't think we did any short plays... Acting together, I, I wrote for you in Human Trap. Yeah, yeah, that's all I can think of. We, we aren't on stage together in any of the Tales shows. Not on stage, but we were on the production team for Metropolis together, yes. which um, I was about to say I have a poster for, but I don't. Um, I directed you in Signal, which I do yes. have a poster yes. for. Obviously, I'll put the actual... <laughs> edit it in but it is yeah. on my wall uh, actually yeah when it comes to stuff we've done together let's let me look oh yeah we know now that not all of the shows are on the wall yeah uh rvb and metropolis are the only ones not on um or twisted yet but we are in that together in twisted yes I hope this is recording fine on your end because I am spazzing out in my own video. You might just have to zoom in on me whenever you start. <laughs> yeah, or edit something up. Yeah. Uh, there's the human trap poster. Oh, people die, of course. So yeah, people die. You directed and I was in. Uh, that should be it for theatre. Uh, in terms of film, you were in an episode of Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters. wrote that episode. Um, there's the two Agent Potter videos, I was in one of those. Um, oh, and Australian Psycho. Were you in another Trent video? No. I think, no, I think those are my only ones so far. Yeah. I only appeared as Dr. Villain and some guy. <laughs> From Australian Psycho. Yeah. Uh, one last job? Yes, yes. I fucking kill you. <laughs> you do, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, soon to be 
hopefully soon to be Street of the Week and Ace Attorney dubs. Yeah, all, all those things that have been in motion for over a year. And, <laughs> I was to- I'm, I'm still saying it's going to be soon. <laughs> was literally talking to Flynn Piper on Messenger last night and we brought up Ace Attorney and he was like, Hey, LeMayo, remember when we were casting that nine months ago? And he goes, yeah, remember when we were casting Street of the Week over a year ago? I mean, they haven't been dropped. No. <laughs> I'm actually still, like, today I got some more footage from, like, more gameplay footage for all Ace Attorney. I mean, literally, it was, it was almost getting to the point where I've been like, I'm ready to start uh, taking my mic around people's houses, getting some audio. <laughs> oh, dear. But Sydney had to be bad at staying inside. So Fucking we Bondi. Well, let's talk talk about scrapped projects that we were in together. Do we have to? <laughs> we don't have to. But, you know, there was a, a, a film script you wrote and... This is what I thought. <laughs> cast yourself in the main role and uh-huh. cast me as goon number two. That's right. What a, what a disparity. <laughs> Man, and I, I, I was, I was casting crazy. that two years ago. <laughs> That really paints the picture of like a, a true egomaniac. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write this movie. I'm gonna cast myself as the lead and one of my closest friends, at Goon Two. <laughs> one of your closest friends, like all your other closest friends, were Driver and the the director of the thing. That feels like so long ago that that was gonna be a thing. Yeah. It's just, just, just well, that just d- d- dropped very quickly. <laughs> So yeah, two years and uh, three months ago, we had auditions for that. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> uh, how time goes when you're in lockdown. Um, I can think of another thil- film thing you've done, which actually was kind of the predecessor for Classified. And you're, you're hoping I'll remember it and be like, oh yeah, that thing, but I... Uh, what was it? <laughs> it's a movie you were in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, never th- I never think about it. I'm always like, a theatre thing? No. A short film thing? No. But yes, uh, uh, a film uh, named Teenagers vs. The Horde. I was a professor named Clyde who inadvertently started the zombie apocalypse. Sick one. The role I was born to play. Well, that uh, maybe that was a predecessor of you starting to play villains. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> Clyde never really had any bad motives. No. <laughs> It's just a big old accident. Well, that's how villains are made, isn't it? Like, I'm sure you're one of those guys who, uh, when you played Gol in Finn McCool and uh, Fitzpatrick in Anvil, you never saw yourself as a villain. Or did you? Were you Goal, like, time to do I, the evil thing? Goal, like, Goal I definitely saw as a villain, because, I mean, that's the kind of show that was. It was very, like, uh, very, uh, very, like, uh, very big and very, like, very hero's journey. Lord of the Rings stakes kind of thing. So I feel like I feel like I had I sort of had to go big, go like melodramatic and yeah. over the top. Like if, if 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 it wasn't a fantasy show, it was all I could do from like just going more ha 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 with the fingers or like wheeling out on stage stroking a cat. <laughs> that was kind of the energy I was bringing to that. But uh, Anvil definitely there was a lot more of like a no. I'm I'm just trying to I'm I'm doing the right thing. I'm upholding the laws of our land. And for that reason, this baby has to die. Yeah. <laughs> or because the mother didn't give me pussy. Well, there's also that, yeah. Like, there's the, the two layers. Laura <laughs> Lynn and also an 1800s simp. <laughs> you were basically Gaston in that one. You were grime a worm tongue in Finn McCall, but Gaston in Anvil. Yeah. yeah I, I was Gaston without any of the, uh, the swooning that accompanied Gaston. Yeah. Uh, and in Pajama Girl, so you say that um, you're not necessarily a villain, but you're more menacing in terms of... So what was actually... Remind me. Yeah, well, well, Pajama Girl is a bit of an odd one because, like, it's based around a real-life mystery that never really got solved. In the show, we present a couple of different theories. We don't necessarily lean one way or the other with it. And my character... Um, it was, like, a month ago. I can't remember the name of the guy. Tony... Tony Agostini, thank you. <laughs> that was it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I'm like, he's not really a villain. He's a fascist. <laughs> um, but no, he, he's presented as this kind of like, he's definitely not a good dude. He's definitely not a good guy. He's very like, he was very like controlling over his wife and he never let her do anything. He was very like strict and like, you know, don't have any fun. And also I'm a fascist. We we imply that he may have killed her. We it's, it's also implied that he might not have. 
So like it was, I think it was like you know walking the line with that role. There were Schrodinger's was, villain. Like, yeah, well, there were there were moments when I sort of intentionally played it like, oh, he definitely did it. Yeah. There were other moments when I went intentionally played it like, oh no, he definitely did it. Yeah. Um, okay, that's cool. Which, which I think is more interesting than just going like, did I? I don't know. <laughs> You've never done a Shakespeare, have you? Uh, I I done all of them. Oh fuck! <laughs> true. <laughs> Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. You haven't done a Shakespeare show. You did all of them in one show. That's Probably a good works. point. Yeah. I think that's, well, probably, uh, the most, that's what, probably the most fun I've had with a show. Very fair. Yeah. The like, most fun I've had. One of the most fun I've had. <laughs> some of the most fun I've had watching a show. Yeah, I mean, we talk about how in the interview I was like, you know, the the short play I was most pro- I've, that's gotten the furthest is like with like no themes and like just pure comedy. That was complete works for two hours. Just, oh, like, I thought you were talking about in terms of what you've written. No, I thought you were talking about Time Squad. I was talking about Time Squad, but like it applies to. Oh, okay. It applies to Complete Works as well. It would defeat the purpose of a show like Complete Works of Shakespeare Bridge <laughs> if we sort of took a moral stance on Shakespeare by the end. But no. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. We, it just has to be what it says on the tin. Do every Shakespeare yeah. play in two hours. Do some genre bending. Do a rap. Have fun with it. <laughs> and that's. You got to tour that one a little bit too. Yeah, we went to Campbelltown for that for one night. To the same theatre that my dad did theatre in, that my grandparents helped build. And I think that was... The- and you didn't find that out till you got there, did you? No, I mean, I knew that they'd done Campbelltown Theatre. I didn't know which theatre. Um, oh, know many, okay. I don't know how many theatres there are in Campbelltown. I'm not sure how much of a coincidence <laughs> it was that we ended up at that same building. Oh, uh, which one? I want to say Campbelltown Town Hall Theatre. Well, speaking of Time Squad, let's talk about that and the, the journey that took. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that was that was like... The that was the most ridiculous, <laughs> going from twenty four hour theatre to the finals of a Sydney competition. Like you, you never would have expected. <laughs> Just like that that year, I think uh, I had I don't think I'd done any writing that year aside from twenty four hour theatre. Yeah, because workshops was the previous year. Tales from the Wasteland was the next year. Yes, yeah, so that was the only thing I. That was twenty sixteen. Sixteen, Jesus Christ! That, right after Red vs Blue. Yeah, the that layer of it, goddamn. You, you you get your stimulus material, you get your actors, you you learn about their strengths and weaknesses, and then that night you have to write a play, and then that next day they perform it. And to think that that play would end up contending with works that have had a lot more thought put into them, a lot more time put into their writing, a lot more things that they're trying to say, um, a lot more original staging, just a lot more in general for a goofy sci-fi about time police to resonate with the judges <laughs> if we want people's choice that's one thing we were kind of pushing for that but the judges were like yes <laughs> that's, that's and, good shit and for the stars to align and that last performance when the judges said you won for that to land on my 21st birthday <laughs> you, can't, you can't you can't write this kind of stuff it's just... if you did You'd win judges. I mean, if I did, we'd win an audience because that's the logical progression for it to take. <laughs> if, if, if you're writing it and that play wins judges, the audience goes, you just jumped the shark there. You was <laughs> this self-insert about a writer who wins something has just gone too far. <laughs> yeah, then the next year you wrote another sci-fi comedy for 24-hour theatre, which went to Sydney the year yeah. after too. Human Trap. The that's only... the one that you were in. Yeah, it's the only form of touring a show I've ever done. So yeah, no, the only acting in Sydney I've done and touring at all was with Human Trap. I'm trying to think, was that the, um, because there was also People Die, but was that the only thing I've ever written for you, like, where it wasn't a collaboration? Tech, or if you're counting Ghost Hunters as a collaboration, in the sense that you knew who you were writing for Ghost Hunters and obviously Street of the Week. Yes. So yeah, I think People Die is the only time that you've written the role and then I was cast after. Still offended that like Boris was written to be this like disgusting, you know. Sleazebag? I'm trying to think of a smart word for it, but yeah, just complete sleazebag. I wanted to look as gross as possible, so you know, I, I wanted to shave my head into a, a toilet seat haircut and just have the mo and like, like wear this Hawaiian shirt and just like look as gross as possible. And you and Sleeman were just like, no, nah, just like look and sound how you normally do, Horvat. Because I was trying to like really put on this voice as well. And I was like, never been more offended in my life. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks so much. It was more the kind of thing where we were like, he rocked up with the haircut. <laughs> and we were like, 
What have you done? You have to live <laughs> with this. <laughs> well, thankfully, it was only a, a two-night show. So I didn't have to, like, do a weekend and then a week of, you know, work and everything and then yeah, come back to the show. Yeah, you had Heathers soon after that, right, where you were going full bald, yeah, so... It yeah, of, yeah. It, it just happened. I was all right. Happened. Well, that's the thing. Like, the, the directors of Heathers uh, came to see people die and saw me with the horseshoe haircut and apparently, like, just looked at each other and was like, that's what we wanted to have for Heathers. And I was like, no. And then Heathers ended up getting extended, so it was, like, every night except the Monday night that and the Monday night I had works so that still would have been one night of work I didn't want to rock up with that haircut you know what I mean yeah, you're lucky people now a weekend. if people that was two weeks do you think you would have done the haircut for it or would you have gone uh no know? I probably would I probably would just gone full bald again right right just an issue now that I'm wearing this like yeah. I've yeah <laughs> now I can just look like Boris on a whim <laughs> at least in this regard this this is a Natural beard. Uh, red vs. Blue was great. Red vs. I still remember the message that you sent to me when it was announced that I was being a Red vs. Blue. You're just like, hey man, just wanted to uh, congratulate you and welcome you to the show. And that's why I thought, okay, I'm I'm gonna be great friends with this guy. This is gonna be a really good experience. And fuck, wouldn't you wouldn't you know? So if I hadn't been in a good mood that day and just been like, oh, I'll say hi at rehearsals. <laughs> What, what put you in a good mood that day? Oh, obviously the news that I was going to be in the show. Well, there we go. And yeah, and look look at that. We The basis of our main friendship group yeah, came it, from that show. That that one show, yeah. Like the majority of people that we still communicate with and hang out with to this day. It makes sense. It was like a, a true comedy ensemble. Like anyone who's seen Red vs. Blue will understand. And like me being Sarge and you being Simmons, who completely simped for me the entire show. Um, I think you and I had great chemistry. Um, oh, I think yeah. I had great chemistry of everyone in that show, Lovell and Sweeting. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, were no, of course. there were no weak links in that cast. Everyone was like, we we had we got along well with basically everyone. And I think it also helped because yeah. like it was it was the the jump of like going from basically out of uni to being like do this full length show. Oh, for a direct? No, no, just it, with your friends. <laughs> Excuse you, like. <laughs> Are uh, they usually more like uh, more red tape that goes along with producing a? W oh no, just do it. <laughs> All right, just, do you want us to like? Yeah, have fun. Well, okay. Yeah. I think that yes, if if we had done because I think I had done a show before that a full length, but did Alice uh, through. Like, yeah, yeah. You went um, Nave of Hearts or something. Yeah, not, not only didn't have much to do, it wasn't really my kind of show. It was very yeah. like like uh, that. That's where Avon Garden comes in. It was very movement based and like kind of weird and wacky and like you know I, i'm not a biggest fan of alice at the best of times <laughs> yeah. like as, as someone who likes telling like telling telling stories i'm kind of like this this is just a bunch of nonsense which is yeah what, what, it's not it's not like shy about that it is what it is yeah but it's not only really my, my cup of tea and then going from that directly into Red rvb pretty much was like oh this is what we can do <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just keep doing this. So you've written works like Verdict and Deja Vu, People Die, in which you've, you know, packed incredible comedic ensembles. Like, I remember just seeing a rehearsal for Verdict. I was like, this is one of the best comedy ensembles I've seen. Uh, yeah. Then I so. got to be in one of those with People Die. That was great. The thing about, like, original theatre, especially in Elmora, is, like, you're never going to get very many people to audition purely because people are like, I don't know what this is. So like, they're less likely to take a chance on it. And I think it's weird because like, yeah. it, it's almost the opposite of what you think might happen or what I think might happen. Because like, obviously the bigger shows, like you, everyone auditions for Grease, everyone auditions for uh, Heathers, everyone auditions for uh, Hairspray, everything like that. But like... <laughs> Good luck doing Hairspray anymore. Well, yeah. But like the thing about those shows is like when people, when people go to see those shows, especially at an amateur level, it's always like, well, like, what's going to be what's going to be different about it what's going to be their take on it yeah which is a weird thing to ask for especially when original theater is right there you're always <laughs> going to get an original take on something and like and for a while i've been like okay well it's a miracle we got the cast that we did with these with this limited amount of auditionees but i think it was almost a foregone conclusion because like if you if you're going to audition for something original there must be either something or so something about the show that you'd be like oh this is speaking to me or, you know, you know the people who are doing it and you're like, okay, I know these people, I know what they do, I know their work, I want to be involved in this. So you, you're basically never going to get someone auditioning for original theatre that's going to be like, eh, whatever, like, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll phone this in. And I think, I think yeah, and when, you, when you're working with a new original piece, you're basically creating it for the, you're creating something new from nothing for the first time ever. And I think 
like that's one of like I, I love original theater so much even acting in it I'm always going to audition for original theater and like it's, it's not about like how am I going to do this role that's different than anyone else ever done it like whenever you're doing uh, an established piece you've always got that in the back of your mind it's like okay so this person did it like this this person did it like that there's a really famous uh, adaptation of this role that's like this I could do something completely different when you've got an original role in front of you it's just like I'm, con- I'm going to do this the best as I can and that's all I need to think about. This no, has been com- my propaganda piece <laughs> for later on when there's another play I'm doing or everyone audition for it. It's going to be fun. Uh, would that be the one that you're co-writing with Bradley Ward? Yep. <laughs> Based. Well, I guess well, in terms of collaboration, nothing was more collaborative than tag team theatre. Yeah. Something I really want to come back to at some point. Honestly, like, what now is the perfect time to do another one of those? <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that because that started yeah, when people died, didn't it? Did. it? Um, Tag Team Theatre was something that myself and uh, two other writers, Jazz Slaman and Sam Lovell, we created together as like a weird, like, I, took, I think I think, I think I came up with the idea, but it was, didn't really take flight until I got those other two involved. Because I was thinking about the, uh, the improv exercise where you do, all right, one word at a time, let's tell a story and it's always nonsense. And I was like, <laughs> I wonder if there's a way you can adapt, adapt this to the stage in a more coherent form. And so we, we came up with, let's do a script, let's write it one line at a time, let's have minimal input into what the content is going to be. And we churned out a one-act play called People Die, and we just had such a fun time doing that. that we, 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 we were expecting to like go heavily in the drafting process, and realistically we should have, it would have made the show <laughs> that much better if you didn't know the context of one line at a time theatre. But yeah, I mean, we, we were just so hyped about that, and we, we then did the same thing for a short play called the death of nightstick which was another satire and that that became deja vu eventually but uh, yeah tag team theater it's something we talked about doing a festival for at a certain point we discussed the possibility of being like okay put the call out get every writer under the sun (laughs) to apply team them up get them to write something and then get some directors to put it on and we'll do a show a little showcase that was something we were legitimately discussing at some point well then you kind of took it to a full length show with um deja vu yeah exactly there wasn't one line at the time it was one scene at a time it was one chunk at a time yeah it was was yeah not even scene (laughs) it was a groundhog day play but every time the character wakes up in the morning new writer takes over um i think that 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 was the logical extreme i don't think we can because that was eight nine writers including myself and so like you can't you can't like unless you do nine writers one line at a time there's no taking it beyond that point so if we ever do a tag team again i'm glad that we reached a logical extreme with it the conclusion yeah yeah definitely that's half an hour you happy with that is there anything else you wanted to talk about no i i got i got my uh my mayoral speech about original theatre out of the way. <laughs> as long as that doesn't Which get I completely cut. agree with. <laughs> no, I wouldn't dare cut that. That's that's the meat of the video. <laughs> there's there's the, case, uh, so. there's the deeper themes that I was talking about never including earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's what they are. I'll I'll shake I'll shake your hand then. Thanks for coming. Well, haven't seen you in how long? Two months now? Yeah, last Ellie. last twisted rehearsal it would have been. Yeah, it was. And now now we're limited to Discord handshakes. <sighs> well, I miss you, so it was good to do this as technologically based as it may be. Yeah. And as based as it may be in general. So yeah, now the actual thanks for watching and see you at the next interview audience. Uh, hopefully it's not six months between interviews this time. Hopefully this has gone well enough that you're like, yeah, th- yeah, I could do this with other people. Yeah, yeah, if anyone, yeah, honestly, if anyone wants to, let me know. Yeah, if people want to be involved, that's who I want to get involved, you know? All right, thank you for your time, Cuff. Party hard for me. No problem. It's not like I had anything else to do with my time. <laughs> You've got writing to do, young man. Well, you, you say that like I haven't already done it. A brother just messaged me on Steam. Oh. Says, damn, I'm really glad you like Bioshock 1 so much. One of my favorite games of all time. That's not theater.